Hello and Happy New Year. Uh, I hope your Christmas celebrations have been as, as joyful as you had hoped they would be. And with this feast of the baptism of the Lord, we come to the end of the Christmas season. There have been some concerns about the crowds and about the, the rise in the number of cases of the virus in our, in our community. And some have asked um, about attendance at, at, at Eucharist. When the, the bishop removed his dispensation, um, I think last spring, um, he didn't remove, however, his, his understanding and his desire and the church's desire that you, each of us, exercise uh, some independent judgment with prudence about whether we should gather with large crowds based on, um, on the needs of our families and, uh, and, our own, and our own health concerns. So if you're someone who is vulnerable to the virus or if you have members of your family who are vulnerable to the virus and you, and you believe that gathering with crowds where people may or may not be masked uh, is not in your best interest or the best interest of those you love, then the church expects you to exercise judgment uh, uh, in um, doing what is prudent and what is best for you and for your family. It can be hard to be away, I know, especially for those who, who desire to gather with the community to celebrate uh, these liturgies especially at this time of year when it's so beautiful outside. Um, the desire to be with us, the desire to be within the community itself is, uh, is a marvelous thing. And it's, it's truly, I think, what the church desires. There are many people who desire to be in community, but because of health concerns, because of uh, travel, because of all kinds of things, they can't be there. But that desire alone um, is... Um, uh, goes a long way uh, to connect one to the community celebration and to the community's gathering. When you can be there, um, do come. When you feel comfortable and safe. But when you can't, when prudence tells you that you um, should exercise uh, your, your judgment just to, to stay away, uh, then uh, the, church, the church supports that decision. I support that decision. The bishop just supports that decision. Thanks. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. So, uh, do you guys remember your baptism? The date of your baptism? Probably not. Uh, the year first, do you remember the year? Uh, the year for me would have been 1984. 84? Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I don't know the date. You were baptized. Place. You were baptized. In uh, Methodist. Methodist church. Yeah, my, my aunt, who's a Methodist pastor, uh, baptized me in my home church. Oh, okay. Yeah. And your father? I was baptized uh, when I was like two, one month now. So about that, you know. In Vietnam? Yes. And uh, you don't uh, remember the year? No. Uh, uh, probably not because I was a baby, but when I look back, again, 1988. 88, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, but the date, no. The day, now I'm, I have like, I remember I saw somewhere, it's, it said like January 8th, but when, <laughs> when I see the paperwork, there's another paperwork that said like February something. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> right, uh, and I, I was I was baptized. Uh, you remember it, right? No, I remember I remember the baptism. The experience. I don't remember the date. I I do remember my my confirmation. That I don't remember what that that was either. Uh, but it's odd that we don't remember such a, you know, an important event in our lives. We remember, at least we have. We celebrate our birthdays, mm -hmm. but we don't remember uh, the date of our baptism, or no one's, no one's 
made it such a special moment right. in our lives that we would, you know, celebrate that in some way right. when it's really kind of the beginning of our uh, of, of our life plugged into the community, you know. Yeah, though uh, I think you know in the reading for today, <clears throat> um, you know, in the same way that our own baptisms just sort of slip invisibly into our lives, most of us, you know, some some folks, you know, our catechumens this year they will remember their baptisms mm-hmm. and they will remember right, right. the date of their baptism right. or be able to Google it easily. I know it'll be <laughs> the Easter Vigil of 2022. Um, but for most, um, for most Catholics and people raised in, in mainstream Christian traditions that baptize babies, um, I think it can just, it takes on the appearance of always having been there. You know, so we say things like, I was born Catholic. Or right, I was yes, born, right, right. right, which, you know, right. strictly speaking, isn't quite right. But, you know, if you notice in the gospel, um, the event of Jesus' baptism also just sort of slips into the background. Uh, it says, after all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying. Right, so these yeah. are all just sort of past, you know, past participles of things that, are, that Luke is setting up in the background, but the action happens after these right. things. So, these people are baptized, made of it. right? These right. people are baptized, and Jesus also was in this crowd of people baptized, and he happened to have been praying, and then the Holy Spirit descends. Hmm. But his own baptism, Luke presents, is just something that has already happened, you know, and it doesn't require any special significance. The significance comes afterwards, uh-huh. um, and so maybe, maybe the fact that we see that in our own lives, that the fact of our having been baptized is always that. And he was baptized, and all these other people were baptized this year. But then life happens and illuminates the significance of our baptisms. Now, our baptism and his baptism would have been very different things. The purpose of them, right? Because he's, we're baptized into the suffering, death, and resurrection of Christ, which is a kind of a whole new worldview. He doesn't need that. He doesn't require that. Right. And John certainly couldn't have done that right. since then it's happened. So in some ways, it's kind of a different thing. This is part of the, the Jewish yes, um, purification, right, or something. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking that, that I mean, sh- surely our need for to participate in his suffering, death, and resurrection is not the same reason why he would be right uh, receive this sacrament. Right, and you even see this tension in the Gospels themselves, where there's some. There's some skepticism or suspicion about why why Jesus needs to be baptized. So, in in the later writings, um, especially in the Gospel of John, um, you know, you have the Baptist saying, "Why, you know, why are you doing this? I should be the one," um, which you know, I think reflects some early uh, curiosity about why it was that Jesus, who is you know sinless, who comes to redeem us would need to undergo a baptism of, of repentance. Um, and if John is baptizing him, right. that would suggest that he's greater than Jesus. Right, right, right. that he's doing right. something to Jesus right. that Jesus right. needed done. Right. Um, you know, I, I think it's interesting to wonder, you know, that as with many things, the events and the experiences happen first, and then the reflection on them among the, the people in the community happen later and produce the texts that help us to understand the meaning of it. But if we take you know Luke seriously, who is cribbed mostly from Mark's account, you know this is just something that Jesus does. You know, so so nobody knows initially why Jesus decides to be baptized. Um, he just does it, right? And then we have to figure out what it means. Well, I wonder if you know if these people are followers of John. You know, mm-hmm. they're all out there because he's preaching and carrying on, and. Uh, you know, sometimes in church you see people, especially in, in the Reformed churches, when a group goes up for baptism, you know, everyone just got you know, people yeah. who, you know, yeah. and, and they call you, if you haven't been baptized, you haven't, if you haven't claimed the Lord or, or whatever it is that they say, uh, then uh, people just become, they come out of the pews, uh, you know, and right. they begin, they start this march forward because, because it's what right. is being done at the time. And I, uh, and he was probably a follower of John. I well, guess. and I think the significance there is, is that you know baptism for these people, um, it, both for for John's baptism, but I think later Christian baptism, 
it's not necessarily fundamentally about me getting my relationship right with God. It is about undergoing this communal bath, this communal ritual rebirth to reconstitute ourselves as God's people, huh. as, you know, for, for these people as, as repentant Israel, which happens so often in the work of the prophets where, you know, the people had gone astray and then a prophet calls them to repentance and the people corporately, communally, uh, you know, rededicate themselves to God and the, the covenant is renewed. And so for Jesus to enter into this baptism, you know, I, I don't think it was the understanding of the early Christian communities that he was fixing anything, anything wrong with his relationship with God so much as he was taking up his place among humans, huh. like hmm. broken, dirty humans right. who right. needed to be here. And if he's not going to do that with us, then he's not truly one of us. And it's a uh, far far e easier term to understand. It's kind of like the uh, abstract say. Mm. So that's kind of like baptism. It's compared to like the the action of repentance. Yeah. Not like the real the sacrament of baptism that we celebrate here. So that's like com comparison for easy to understand like that baptism as the abstract say. Everyone like invite to come in and get the action on your your head so mm. to know that now I'm humble and come back and ask him for forgiveness or the repentant of heart. Yeah, so you're saying that this baptism outside. by John is that? Yes, so okay. that's a, it's because that actually what, what it was, right? Right, baptism of repentance. Yeah, yeah, repentance, not like the baptism of the forgiveness, forgiveness of your original sins, uh, the, 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 the grace that go with the, uh, the, the, the side, the visible side. Hmm. So, and that original sin uh, question, which you bring up, you know, tra tradition that we, the church, uh, we uh, teaches that uh, there are two things that happen with our baptism, with the baptism, you know, into the Paschal mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the the cleansing of original sin, oh, and uh, the um, joining to the people of God, the, the connection to the community. Um, they Cleansing of original sin can be somewhat problematic for a child. I mean, I don't know how, how you explain that to the parents who are um, who are preparing for baptism. They must have questions about that. They, surely, yeah. You know, they look at this child who has done nothing and can hardly right. and has, has <laughs> spoken not a word. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and that comes up, you know. Right. And, and I, I, as with many things, I, I try not to answer it too clearly because these are mysteries that are fruitful only when we really take the time to kind of figure it out, you know, to, mm -hmm. um, but I do ask parents to look, look at their baby and ask, you know, if, if baptism is going to fix them or do something, take away something, you know, what, what do you think is wrong here? You know what? And, and most of the time, you know, they, they're, they're so in love with their, you know, these helpless, beautiful, squirmy things that they can't find anything wrong. Uh, you know, and some who have been you know, more or less religiously trained to, sit, to find something, it's always something at a very high sort of metaphysical or religious level. You know, there's, there's something broken about humanity that, that needs to be fixed. Um, but, but I think, you know, the priority of things here is important. The, these two things that you mentioned the baptism does, the cleansing of original sin. So there's a healing that happens and the immersion into the life of the church and the life of Christ. I think we need to be careful about getting our priorities right, that the cleansing of original sin is an effect of being initiated or being being right. um, yeah. brought into the church. It's not as though, <clears throat> oh, I wanted to say, there's a way of seeing it where like, you can't enter the church until your sin sins are cleansed, right? But maybe the more appropriate way of saying it is, by drawing you know this child into the church that that is the cleansing of sins right. that is you know by by putting putting us back in our original context as a family as a community as people who love and care for one another which is what the church signifies symbolizes that's how our actual sins are healed um, because maybe the original wound was this tendency to, to isolate ourselves, to yeah. separate ourselves, to uh, to hide, you know, to separate. And uh, 
and also like the definition of uh, <coughs> sin too. The separation, right? Mm -hmm. The separation from the grace of God. Right. right. So whatever we we uh, we make the decision, or we choose, we make the decision, like commit sin is like to stay away or to to uh, go against His will for us. So that's sins. Mm. So that's original sins, like from the beginning. That's our tendency to withdraw. The only things that like. <laughs> Connect, connect us together is because of your fault, not my fault. That's the only things that we related, but in a way not build it up as a community of, uh, and a family, the relationship with him, but this uh, disconnected. Hmm. So, mm -hmm. so, that's a, so that's a grace of baptism that we initiate us into that relationship. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's important also to see that, and we see this clearly in infant baptism. When I have conversations in the RCIA with people who come from traditions that don't baptize infants, um, that that say things like, uh, "We're not gonna, we're not gonna baptize someone until they can make up their own minds about it," um, which you know, there's some thinking there that I like. You know, we do eventually have to uh -huh. make decisions, but I think. What infant baptism shows us is that it's not our decision, you know. Not first of all yeah. that, that it's it's God who chooses, right? right. And then we right. and then we respond. Right. And uh, using for example, like <laughs> I I like the uh, gadgets and everything that have more features is better, <laughs> and if I can pay more for the. The features that look cool, but like I, I may not using it. So it's kind of like I want to have that enable, just mm -hmm. in case like I need it. I'm not needed like hunt all the time, but I need it. Sometimes I want to use it. So not like one by one with the baptism, but like baptism is that. Yes, we was born bodily, but spiritually, we need that to be enabled too spiritually to open to that grace of God through baptism mm. so that yes yeah, so when you was young you didn't make that de decision your parents make that decision because they want the good for the baby mm. probably they use it or not in the future we don't know but at least we provide all there for them mm. available so that when they grow, they grow up they they, they keep using it, they keep practicing it. That's their decision. But at the beginning, we want to provide everything. And baptism is like a kind of vaccine or the, the, the medicine that you know is good for your baby. You want to have it, you don't wait until the baby say to you, I want to have that. No, you don't. You, you know it's good. You want to give it to your baby now, mm. right? And it's what they've experienced, you know, you know, being in the community, being connected. Uh, and no matter, uh, I found over the 32 years of priesthood that no matter how um, automatic sometimes the uh, bringing a child for baptism seems to be among parents, there's still this sense within them deeply that I was connected to the community mm -hmm. this way. I need my child to be connected to the community. Mm -hmm. They may or may not know what that means. Right. They just know that you've got to be connected, you know. And I think that's that's a profound thing. Yeah. Right. And I found that it's you know there there's kind of a, a life cycle among Catholics who are raised in the church, um, at least here, where lots of people go through the system. You know, they're baptized as babies. They get all they get all their sacraments. That's how we talk about it. You know, they first communion, confirmation. Oftentimes, after confirmation, there's sort of a, a period of relaxation. Sometimes it's in high school. More often, I find it, it's in college where people maybe don't practice as fervently as they did. They don't go to church every Sunday. Um, sometimes it's a bit natural for their whole life. They've had a carrot in front of them that they, they're doing all this stuff to get their sacraments. And all of a sudden, there's no, no like externalized reason to go. Um, 
And then something happens. And so maybe they're not practicing, but something happens where they have this desire you're talking about. Usually, it's when a baby's born. Right. Sometimes it's marriage, but usually it's when a kid is born. And there's this, there, there's this latent desire for, I want my kid to have this thing. I hadn't thought about it until now, but I can't imagine them not having it. And it's a great opportunity because they don't know what that is. You know, right, they, have, right. they haven't necessarily thought about things with a grown-up mind. The, the, all they have is where they were in eighth grade when they stopped practicing. And it's a really good opportunity for them to think, what am I going to pass on? Like, what, what is it about baptism, about this life that, you know, if I want it for my kid, then clearly I want it for myself. Um, and it's, it can be a, a journey of rediscovery, of figuring it out. Um, that, that's really, you know, it's, it's a way that children give us life. Um, because all of a sudden there's something at stake here. Right. Um, but I was thinking when you were talking about the parents, do you think one of the things that that moves them also to uh, to bring the child to baptism is, I mean, the weight of the responsibility of the child. I mean, he had this new life, and you know that alone, you know, you're not you're not, you're not sure all the needs. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you know what the, the physical needs may be, and even that can be a mystery sometimes because they can't speak. Uh, but the burden, the weight of the responsibility of, of bringing this child to adulthood, um, I would think that there would be some, some desire to call on the God that no one's ever seen, <laughs> you know, uh, just for whatever help you, you, know, you can get. Yeah. And that is like a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated the Holy Family too, <laughs> even the Holy Family, the Immaculate Conception. <laughs> The, 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 the great saints Joseph mm-hmm. they still like struggle in miscommunication yeah. oh. and all mm-hmm. that so so I think par- parenting is not like the uh, you, you follow the manual and everything it, if there is a manual there are so many manuals <laughs> right. that it's, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they you go to the library about, and look right. up how to right. parent everyone has a different idea right. yeah too many manuals yeah. no I think I think that's right you know the notion that you know, parenting, as with anything, any relationship, but especially parenting, because of the power involved, is fraught with missteps. And, um, you know, to, to maintain a relationship with your kids where you can all absorb failures, you know, because mm-hmm. all parents screw up and, and we're working Excuse through me? our own... I mean, not me. But, <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, more importantly than whether, you know, making this decision or that decision it's whether the family can whether absorb carry on the you know what decisions have been made so am i going to be accountable to my kids when they're grown-ups you know and, and can our you know my and natasha's decisions be are they intelligible or do they make sense even if if the kids don't agree with it and i think for us you know, the sort of backdrop of this, this story of, of the Paschal mystery of, of death and resurrection is really comforting because we're kind of surrender, we're sur- surrendering ourselves, hopefully, to a mystery that will unfold even in our missteps, mm-hmm. even when we, we don't know how to parent or when our four kids are so very different that we have to have four different parenting styles and explain to our oldest perfect child why we were harder on her than we were on the youngest baby. And, and it's... it's uh, so are there times when you go to bed and you think, did I do that right? No, I'm pretty sure I didn't. You know, I, don't, oh, I, don't, I don't wonder. Uh, um, but, but it's grace, right? It's, it's this yeah, idea yeah, yeah. That, that what's essential is, is the love that precedes everything. And as long as we have a, our finger on that, um, you know, we can't absorb anything. Uh, but when we lose sight of that, then our relationships become transactional. We start counting up costs. Or um, I think that can happen in any relationship, especially our relationship with God, where we forget that God is always already loving us and giving us everything we need. And all of a sudden we can think that we can enter into some kind of a bargaining or a transaction. Um, Which is why then the words... Um that Jesus that are heard from the heavens are important, I think. Yeah. Everyone needs to know, the church says, early on and often, that they're loved. Mm-hmm. 
and that God, parents, godparents, they were pleased with them, mm. and that growing up in that environment where the love comes first, uh, then I'm more likely to choose love. Mm -hmm. Though not even he didn't, <laughs> I, I, I've never understood that. You know, but, um, anyway. And that it does a, the, the good news for this Sunday to be reminded that as uh, the heavenly voice say to Jesus, you yeah, are my yeah. beloved son, with you I am well pleased. Mm. And we are as the baptized, we baptize into his mystical body. So we are his beloved sons and daughters as yeah. well. So we, as you said, remember that. Because that's where we got all of our goodness and all the the, the things in this life and why we do do good hmm. in the case I mean, of... But those words are pretty profound, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, you are loved, and I'm really pleased with you. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think more teenagers need to hear that. I mean, they need to really hear it. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, it, because it's before Jesus does anything, right? right? No, it's right, not at right. the end of no his end. life where this, this is the beginning of his right, ministry. where God says, "Oh wow, you you really did a lot for me. Therefore, I love you and I'm right. pleased with you." Right. He begins with a conviction about God's love for him, and he's been lost at twelve, and it's probably we don't know what happened between twelve and thirty. But I can assure you, <laughs> I was telling you a mass one morning what that uh, you know some of it yeah, probably not sin, but. The stuff of life, right. you know, missteps. Uh, yeah, mis yeah. yeah, and uh, things that could be interpreted as right. sins. I mean, yeah. just like right. leaving it's your parents could be interpreted as yes, getting lost. Right, and, right. Um, but um, but even before any good thing that's recorded, mm -hmm. uh, he's loved and uh, and pleased. Anyway. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who when Christ has been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declare him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. May God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go. Peace. Prudence hasn't been baptized. Does that worry you? Uh, she has been baptized. I took her over one, late one night. When no one was around. <laughs> Thank you.